So, now let us come to the seismic analysis procedures. If we talk about the structural model, we now know that it can be a linear model with a constant elastic modulus of the material, constant uh, cross sectional properties and constant uh, configuration lengths of the element or it can also be a non-linear model with a uh, with a variable elastic modulus which means the material will have its actual stress strain curve and similarly the the cross sectional stiffness and member stiffness can also be variable in that so there are two categories of uh, structural models based on linearity uh, one are linear model which follows f is equal to ku forever and other is a non-linear model which is a damage aware model. It has all the capacities of elements in it, all the capacities of materials in it. So, if there is any material which is overstressed or any capacity which is uh, overcome by the applied loading, the model will tell that now the yielding or cracking has occurred. If we talk about seismic loading, uh, it can be uh, approximated by the static force seismic loading can be approximated by a static force, uh, but actually we know that it is a dynamic effect, not a dynamic force, it is a dynamic effect which can result in the development of dynamic forces in our, uh, in our um, computer model. So, seismic loading can be approximated either as static or dynamic. right? So, based on this classification of structural model on one side and the seismic loading on the other side. Uh, I can classify different seismic analysis procedures. For example, the first one very basic one is the equivalent lateral force procedure, which is mostly prescribed by uh, the building codes and mostly used for conventional regular kind of structures. Now, by the way, we know that what are the conditions in which uh, the ELF procedure or any other procedure is permitted or not permitted. So, ELF procedure will lie in somewhere first quadrant in this figure, because it will use a linear elastic model and it will approximate the seismic loading as static loading. So, a linear model will be subjected to static loading and this will be your seismic analysis procedure. Then the next will be the response spectrum analysis procedure. Uh, it is also called as modal response spectrum or mode spectral analysis for example. And it will be somewhere between static and dynamic, but it will still use a linear elastic computer model. The effect of inelasticity will be approximately or ac implicitly accounted by using R factor in all of those linear seismic analysis procedures. Why the response spectrum analysis is somewhere between static and dynamic? Uh, because we know that the determination of those static forces, uh, which we apply as a representative of future earthquake loading to our linear model. In this procedure, those static forces are determined using the mode shapes and natural time periods of uh, the, the building. So, there is some role of dynamics of building in the de determination of those static forces. Then we have the modal response history analysis and the linear response history analysis using direct integration. Both 3 and 4 are the rigorous dynamic analysis in which the seismic loading is dynamic loading and the computer model used uh, is linear. So, in all those uh, 1 to 4 procedures, we apply the R factor, we apply the C D factor and omega factor, right? because the inelastic effect is not explicitly accounted in all those 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, building codes recommend either 1, 2, 3 or 4 like linear analysis procedures for the conventional structural design purpose. Uh, the latest ones also allow or permit you to use the non-linear time history analysis also if you want, but that may not be warranted for each, each structure. right? In the non-linear domain, in this second column, uh, the first method will be the pushover analysis procedures and it is not one method, there are several pushover analysis methods. You use a non-linear computer model and you subject that model to static loading representing earthquake. right? So, if you go for this number 5 option, 
you will not require any r factor or any other factor because the nonlinearity is explicitly accounted by the computer model itself so if you remember that two lines oa oa and the second line which was nonlinear line so if you are in the second quadrant or second column you are already able to capture the actual nonlinear line so no need to approximately capture it using r factor and then cd factor right r brings the forces down forces and displacements down and then you again amplify the displacements right to approximately capture that that uh, o ob line or non linear line but here in the second column you your model will actually follow that real non linear line so no need of r factor but in the first uh, generation of performance based design procedures we used to use this number 5 but nowadays explicitly we use the non linear dynamic analysis 6 or 7 6 or 7 both are non linear dynamic analysis but uh, their analysis engine is different uh, or computation procedure is different right so in both 6 and 7 your model is non linear and at the same time you use the real earthquake history to represent your seismic loading right so it is the non linear analog or non linear version of the linear time history analysis right so nowadays we use 6 or 7 or non linear dynamic analysis directly in the performance based design right so if there is any damage or any non linear effect the model is explicitly able to tell the ana analyst that this non linear effect has occurred right so we get a real feel of the structural performance or structural behavior right so this is the overall picture all four types of seismic analysis procedures linear static linear dynamic non linear static and non linear dynamic right so in pbd we focus only on non linear dynamic Uh, when we talk about the maximum considered earthquake evaluation right but for service level evaluation where we expect that structure will not go in non linear range we can use the response spectrum analysis or linear time history analysis right so for service level evaluation in pbd we may use linear dynamic procedure and for mc level we expect that there will be significant damage so we go for non linear dynamic right but the code domain is the first column although it permits now the use of non linear time history analysis but mostly uh, most of the recommendations they are related to either 1 2 or 3 right 3 or 4 are same thing only their computation procedure is different so it either uh, uh, it either recommends elf procedure or rsa procedure uh, or the linear time history analysis the non linear time history analysis is mostly used for the design check or retrofit design or the final review of design for example right so uh, just a quick summary elf and rsa use linear computer models and they use r factor so r factor limits the elastic base shear to a design level base shear and then we rely on the ductility and over strength right so we don't design on the actual elastic demand imposed by the earthquake we give the capacity which is far less than what is demanded by the earthquake right and then rely on the ductility and over strength right uh, the time history analysis again it can be linear or non linear the linear one will be similar to rsa because it will be using r factor cd factor omega factor everything right but the non linear time history analysis will not use these factors so whatever seismic demand you get or uh, for example some moment in the beam or shear in the beam you get from non linear time history analysis this is directly the design value no need to reduce it by r right it is already reduced by the effect of non linearity during the analysis right and there is non linear static procedure which is no more used nowadays but it is a very effective tool to understand the behavior of non linear behavior of the structure for example in this analysis you construct a non linear model and then push it 
starting from a very low force value up to a very high force value which cause significant damage in the building and then with each new push you see what further damage or new damage has occurred and it will give you an idea about how the damage is going to progress in your structural model the progression of structural damage uh, will will be a very valuable information right and then you can push it with different patterns to understand structural behavior under different types of loadings so push over analysis procedures are uh, very useful in developing the feel about structural behavior you can say if there is any inherent uh, weakness of your structure uh, the push over analysis will directly reveal that right so if there is a significant or some serious flaw in your in your design for example some elements are being highly stressed while others are relaxing on the other side th that can directly be identified using push over analysis right so the adequacy of structural proportioning the uh, the adequacy of how you provided the steel in your structure in different elements all those uh, things can be checked or identified uh, using these push over analysis procedures so for elf rsa and lthe i have separate uh, lecture series available so i'll not go into detail of these three methods i will focus directly on ibc 2021 or bcp 2021 so all those provisions which are recommended by these this code about these procedures i'll only talk about that right so uh, for more information you can refer to their separate playlist elf then this one is rsa uh, i started with basic introduction and then go to uh, building codes are also covered but then i uh, talk about the actual mathematical calculations and uh, formulation which is behind that method right similarly this is for linear time history analysis and all of those three uh, these three series they have adequate demonstration about the software use also so i use mostly etabs so i showed how you can automate these methods in etabs